How little can you spend on a road bike and still have a good time out there? Well, at just $800 US, this Trivan RC120 is literally 120th the cost of the Colnago C68 I reviewed just a few weeks ago. <music> Haven't heard of Trivan? Well, it probably depends a lot on where you're from. Uh, you see, Trivan is the house brand of giant French sports retailer Decathlon. Obviously huge in Europe and the UK. However, Decathlon's only just recently made their way into the US. So for $800, as you'd expect, this is probably gonna be the first road bike for a lot of people. And the aspirations are pretty modest. You have a TIG welded aluminum frame, pretty industrial looking tubing, pretty angular shapes. I mean, it's not really anything particularly special. No big deal, again, it's 800 bucks. Uh, other kind of compromises that you see, you have cable actuated disc brakes from Promax, the aluminum bar stem seat post saddle, it's pretty much all as generic as it comes. Aluminum rims, aluminum hubs, that sort of thing three-piece aluminum crank with a square taper bottom bracket, steel chain rings. That all said, it does still come with some niceties. You do have a two by eight micro shift drivetrain with pretty wide range of gearing and nicely integrated brake and shift levers up here that kind of mimic the action of Campagnolo if you've ever used that before. Uh, and those aluminum rims are tubeless compatible. So although they are wrapped with pretty low end uh, 28 mil kind of house brand tires, no idea who makes these, you do have the option for something a little bit nicer. Speaking of tires, the tire clearance on this bike is pretty impressive. So the overall, the arrangement here is pretty classic, uh, kind of endurance bike setup in terms of the geometry. However, Triben says this bike will fit 700C tires up to 40 mil. So if you want to kind of go do some gravel and a, maybe a little bit of dirt road adventuring on a budget, this might be a decent way to go. In terms of the weight, I would say it's about what you'd expect for a bike that costs as little as this does. It's not terribly light. It's just under 11 kilos in a size small uh, without pedals or accessories. Uh, speaking of accessories, you've only got room for two bottle mounts inside the main triangle. Nothing up top here and nothing underneath the down tube. You can put front and rear fenders on here, however, if you're looking to get yourself a nice cheap rain bike. So overall, I would say, you know, we get accused of reviewing bikes that cost way too much money here at Cycling Tips. That's not gonna be the case with this bike. However, we are gonna be testing this bike just the same as we are doing all the other road bikes here at the 2022 field test in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. So we should go take this thing out on the roads and see how it does. We are back at Mountain Tap Brewery and we have come to you the least expensive bike in the field test grouping this year, the Triban RC120. I think our expectations for this bike were pretty modest. How do we think it did relative to that? I think it exceeded our expectations for, for where we were at. And I think we also had some bikes on test that were substantially more expensive and we enjoyed a lot less compared to riding the Triban. Ellen? Yeah, I'd have to agree with Dave. It's a bike that I wasn't really expecting to have a whole lot to say about. And I think that there are a lot of positives, especially for the price point. I, mean, I feel like everyone came back with similar reactions. They were kind of like, this bike is really not that bad. Yeah. Like it's stiff enough. It's, I mean, the ride quality is not amazing, but it's not terrible. It's not rattling all over the place. It doesn't feel like you're losing control when the road gets rough. It's, it's relatively smooth, all things considered. Uh, and yeah, it's, I found it just a comfortable bike to get on with. Like I, I just, it's, I was quite happy just pedaling along and riding it. There was nothing that was bothering me every moment of the ride, you know, it was comfort to sit on, comfort to hold the handles at, uh, and, and yeah, just did what you wanted it to do as a bicycle. All right. So what about the weight of this bike? Because as the least expensive bike in the test, it was not surprisingly one of the very heaviest, not the heaviest surprisingly, but did, uh, I should mention that we are at a working brewery, just FYI, so if you hear some background noise, that's why. Anyway, um, did that weight bother you at all? It didn't really bother me that much. I mean, I think what I admired about this bike is that it kind of just did what it was meant to do. It's an entry-level road bike. It was pleasant on the road, and I don't think that for a road bike of this type that, it was, uh, that the weight was really super prohibitive. Yeah, I think they could have made it lighter at this price point by changing the disc brakes for rim brakes. But I think that would have brought in different compromises. Like we've got at the moment behind you, that bike is sitting with 35 millimeter gravel tires and is quite a capable machine. And if they'd done that rim brake uh, choice, then the bike wouldn't be as versatile as it actually is. Right. I mean, overall, it sounds like 
again, like we had pretty reasonable expectations for this thing. And I kept looking at this bike in the context of it being someone's first road bike, which is almost certainly what it would be. Especially on around here, like these roads are beautiful, they go on forever. I mean, if this was your only road bike, if this was how you were start looking to get into it, I mean, do you feel like you could have just hopped on this bike and just gone for hours and hours and been totally fine? Surprisingly so, yes, I think so. Uh, I mean, it's, it's certainly not a perfect bike and we'll get to that. And there certainly are elements that it's a cheaper bike when you ride it, like the, the way it shifts and the way the brakes work and the way the tires feel, all of that are signs of the price. But yeah, if I was new to cycling, I wouldn't know any of that and I would be quite happy on this bike. And the fact that I spend a lot of my time riding bikes that are 10 times the price of this and I was still quite happy to be on this bike and I didn't feel like turning around immediately, it's a really positive sign. Uh, what about some, I guess, compromises? Because undoubtedly there are going to be compromises at this price point. Um, we had integrated brake shift levers and a two by eight drivetrain. Um, worked okay. Did you want more? I certainly did. And I think that's where, you know, a bike at this price point, it kind of needs to be like reiterated that it is more of an entry level bike. Anyone watching this who may have a bike 10 times this cost is saying, I could get a bike for $800. Like, why don't I just do that? Well, <laughs> there are some reasons. And I think especially one thing that I was really wanting for when I rode this bike was slightly better um, gearing options. I felt like there were really big jumps in the cassette. Uh, so I, I definitely struggled to find a gear that I was comfortable in. But that's something that I do think you start to get spoiled with when you're riding super dialed cassettes. Uh, and so once again, for what this bike does, I think that overall it's a positive. You also had some concerns over, I remember you came back from one of the rides and, and made a comment about the, the shifter ergonomics and the mm -hmm. style of shifting that you didn't get on with it. You didn't find it super intuitive. Yeah. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, I, I had a lot to say about the micro shift drivetrain in general, especially with the shifters. Um, I think as the trend of all drivetrains is kind of going towards fewer buttons to get on a bike that has, uh, you know, finger buttons and thumb buttons or shifters or whatever you want to call them. Uh, it definitely felt like a big step back. And for me, having never ridden campy or micro shift, it felt really overwhelming to suddenly have so many buttons. And I, it actually took me quite a while to get comfortable. Whereas James, you probably agree with me on this. It was kind of almost a throwback riding this bike because it reminded <laughs> me of like nine and 10 speed camping. Oh, well, I mean, I still ride 12 speed campy and the 12 speed mechanical is still the same. So for me, it was, it was intuitive. So someone coming onto this bike is guaranteed to have zero experience on a camping mechanical setup. So yeah, I think it's a very fair, fair criticism. Um, Ellen, we all noted something kind of weird about the crank too, right? <laughs> yeah, we were calling this the horse bike uh, <laughs> because the Q factor, which is the distance between the two crank spindles, I guess, is that the measurement? Mm -hmm. was so wide that for me riding it, I prefer a very narrow Q factor. Uh, it was super wide on this bike, so it made me feel really bow-legged. Even it was so distinct that I could look down at my feet clipped into the pedals and I felt like I was like kind of, like I like could see that my, because yeah, duck footed, because mm -hmm. I could see that my feet were in a very, very different position from how I'm used to riding. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that was the one thing that would have prevented me from riding this bike, just getting on and going for hours that, was that. And that's a weird parts choice on their part, because there's no reason to have it that wide on that frame. You look at where the cranks sit in relation to the frame and the cranks are just like, there's just daylight between the crank and the frame. So it's just, just the wrong bottom bracket spindle length. It's maybe. the wrong bottom bracket spindle, but you also look at the crank arm itself and it kind of bows out. It's not like straight line. So there's, there's I think, a combination of weird things going on there. Right, yeah. right. Uh, brakes, these are mechanical brakes that are on here, but surprisingly, they were pretty good. Yeah, it's certainly far from the worst mechanical brake we had on test. And these yeah, brakes actually do what you expect a brake to do, which is stop you. So I don't have any real complaints about these brakes. Like pretty reasonable bite, like pretty good control, I think overall, like the yeah. lever action was pretty, pretty light. Um, I feel like one aspect of this bike that definitely played to its favor is the external cable routing, right? Like okay. everything's smooth and the lines were done and like there wasn't that much friction. Like it all seemed to, like it worked pretty well. They prioritized function over form. Yeah, there would have been, and I'm guilty of this. There would have been a time maybe eight years ago when the bike industry was moving away from things like the threaded bottom bracket, 
putting cables inside, inside the frame for aesthetics, moving to like tapered head tubes and uh, integrated seat posts and all these things. And I would have been saying like, oh, you know, all these new features are fantastic. But what we've learned over the years is that sometimes the classic way of doing things is the better way of doing things. And this, fr this frame is dated in all the right ways. It has all the old fitments and they all work. Weird. Uh, we, we did run into some downsides on this bike. None of them seem super critical. So as we mentioned, the, the crank Q factor was a problem. I think none of us were really that big a fan of the tires. The tires on this bike are really cheap. Very cheap, yeah. Uh, I think the, ben the they, they look narrow. They say a 28. I think we actually measured them close to a 20, 27, 26. Uh, they're you know, a, little, a little like, uh, what would you say, a bit? They're pretty dead feeling. Pretty like, dead feeling, yeah. Uh, but I think the benefit to them is that they probably have enough rubber in them that you're not going to get a lot of punctures with them. But Maybe, or on the flip side of that, because it's such a cheap tire, it's probably like a 30 or 60 TPI casing, True. which are more susceptible to cutting, Yeah. ironically. So, yeah. I mean, so. we didn't get any punctures on this bike, but... but... Yeah, I think that is certainly one area that the bike could benefit from having something a little nicer. Um, but that said, as a whole, I don't know if this is the sort of bike that I'd spend a lot of money upgrading. No, I would, probably I not. would ride it the way it is. And then once the, the bug of cycling is bitten, I would move it on and get something, something better that is all around better. Any comments on like ancillary bits, like the bar stem, seat post saddle, anything like that? It all just worked for me. The seat post was short though, wasn't it? That's true. We did, so for me, I, I've got a pretty tall saddle height as, as far as how tall I am. And I did need to change the seat post out because it just wasn't long enough for me. And I think you are on that same, on kind of well, the cusp of that. My saddle height is definitely lower than yours, yeah. although very much within the range of normality for this bike size. Mm -hmm. And my saddle height um, is, was actually just slightly above the minimum insertion line, just a little bit. Yeah, so it's not. So that just seems like an oversight. Like it just should be longer. They should just give you an extra 50 millimeters of seat post. Yeah. It's not gonna cost them anything, so. So any other final thoughts on this thing? It seems like it, not a whole lot of surprise, but not any letdowns either. Like it seems like it kind of lived up to what it's supposed to be, right? Yeah, the, the only other thing that I'd say is just annoy me a little bit. And this is something you wrote a column about when we worked at a previous publication many years ago, uh, cheap quick release skewers. Oh, yeah. Yes. So pretty much every other bike we had on test had through axles where the whole, it's like not a even big, pretty much every other bike, every other bike had through axles. So that's a big bolt that basically runs through an enclosed dropout and holds the wheel in place. This has the older quick release style skewer, which is uh, let once you undo it, you kind of unwind it a few times, the wheel just drops straight out. Uh, no issue, it worked well in this situation, but those, those quick releases we know from experience, they're quite cheap. Over a couple of years, they get harder and harder to close. Eventually it gets a struggle to get your wheels tight enough in the frame. Um, so yeah, I think that's just one area that it's, it's a sign of the price, right? I mean, if that's our biggest complaint, that seems pretty okay. $800 when you get a bike that we're all happy to ride. That's pretty great. All right, well, there you go. Those are our thoughts on the Trivan RC120. If you liked what you saw here, go ahead and hit that like button below. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming content from our field test event. If you got any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and we'll get back to you right away. Make sure you head over to cyclingtips.com for the full written review for a whole bunch more detail. And thanks to ASOS for sponsoring this field test and making this event possible in general. So with that, we'll see you next time with some more stuff from Field Test.